Welcome back. In this lesson, I'll teach you everything you need to know about interval and amplitude measurements. There are a couple of diseases where measuring makes a lot of sense and will lead you to the correct diagnosis, like ventricular hypertrophy, bundle branch blocks, or other conduction problems. On the other hand, there are a lot of diseases where measuring is not necessary to find the correct diagnosis, like myocardial infarction, ischemia, or various other rhythm disorders. Then there are situations where the beginner has to measure, but the expert doesn't, because she has an eye for it. She's looked at so many ECGs that she knows precisely when amplitudes and time intervals are off. In this lesson, you'll learn how to perform correct measurements on the ECG curve. So let's jump right into the simple and straightforward skill. This is the standard grid of the ECG paper. This grid has large boxes and small boxes. Each side of a small box is one millimeter in length, and each side of a large box is five millimeters in length. On the ECG paper, you can measure in two dimensions. One dimension, the y-axis, is measuring millivolts. The other dimension, the x-axis, is measuring time. Let's have a look at the millivolts first. One millivolt corresponds to 10 millimeters, so two large boxes in length, from here to here you have one large box of five millimeters. And from here to here, you have another large box of five millimeters. So 10 millimeters in total, which equals one millivolt. Next, let's look at the time axis. Most ECGs are written at a paper speed of 25 millimeters per second. So the distance from here to here corresponds to 25 millimeters or one second. As you can easily see, this one second consists of five large boxes. So one large box therefore corresponds to one fifth of a second or 0.2 seconds. One large box or a 0.2 second segment consists of five millimeters. So one millimeter corresponds to one fifth of 0.2 seconds or 0.04 seconds. So here's what you have to remember. 25 millimeters corresponds to one second, five millimeters corresponds to 0.2 seconds, and one millimeter corresponds to 0.04 seconds. When you start to measure, you always have to start at the isoelectric line, which is here at the dotted line. So when you measure amplitudes or millivolts, you'll always have to start at the point on the ECG where the curve leaves the isoelectric line. So when we want to measure the amplitude of this S wave, we measure from here to here. When we measure time intervals, we also start at the isoelectric line. So the interval starts at the point where the curve leaves the isoelectric line, which would be here for the P wave, until the curve comes back to the isoelectric line, which would be here for the P wave. This is the P wave duration. The same holds true for the QRS complex, of course. It starts to deviate from the isoelectric line here, and it comes back to the isoelectric line over here. That's when the QRS complex is over. So this is the QRS duration. Let me show you a quick trick when measuring time intervals. Let's say you'd like to measure the duration of this QRS complex. First, we put a piece of paper here then we mark the beginning of the QRS complex and its end. Once you mark that down, you can put the sheet of paper to the beginning of a large box and some free space of the ECG paper. And you count the number of small boxes until the end of this interval, which would be one, two, three, four, or three and a half probably. Since each little box corresponds to 0.04 seconds, 3.5 times 0.04 equals 0.14 seconds. Pretty easy, isn't it? Next, let's talk about the duration of the PR interval. The PR interval starts at the beginning of the P wave and ends at the beginning of the QRS complex. It represents the time the atrial depolarization takes to travel through the AV node in order to reach the ventricles. And finally, one more interval, the QT interval. It starts at the beginning of the QRS complex and ends at the end 
of the T wave. So I hope everything was clear. If not, rewatch this video. Otherwise, please go through the exercises and perform the measurements yourself. You can either do the measurements on the screen by counting the boxes and calculating the time intervals or amplitudes, or you can print out the PDFs and do the measurements on paper or use your workbook. Either way is fine. So do this important exercise now, and I'll see you in the next lesson. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.